Hey guys, today's um, video is based on fitness training methods. You'll be able to use these concepts to create your own fitness program. Um, just before we get started, hopefully you pay attention to some of the quirky pictures I've put in. Um, I went to a bit of effort to make it a bit humorous today because I know I'm not funny. Um, hopefully the pictures uh, do their job though. So let's start off with a list. You've got continuous training, interval training, Fart leg, speed, resistance, plyometrics, circuit, flexibility, Swiss ball and core strength. So starting off with continuous training um, basically means that you're going, to you're going to continuously train for 20 minutes or longer and working within your aerobic zone, so 70 to 85% max heart rate. Um, you'll be working obviously your aerobic energy system and also you can uh, work on local muscular endurance at the same time. Um, some examples that you could um, use to employ continuous training are running, cycling, swimming and rowing, but basically anything that's a continuous movement uh, for 20 minutes will suffice. Um, and also to improve or overload continuous training, you can look at increasing the distance or the time, um, also the intensity, so long as it doesn't go um, above that 85%, and also the incline, you could add a slight hill to your work. So interval training is looking at periods of um, work interspersed with rest. And generally the um, periods of work will stay the same unless you're trying to um, overload it. So the, um, the different fitness components that you'll be looking to improve can vary depending on the length of that work period. So you could have long work periods um, and then you'd be looking at aerobic capacity. Well, you could have really short, intense work periods and then you'd be looking at anaerobic capacity. Um, some examples of doing this are just generally running and swimming, um, but you could also do this sort of thing on a treadmill, a treadmill or um, a stationary bike at the gym. To increase this, you could look at increasing the sets or the reps, um, look at increasing the intensity or the distance, or even decreasing the, the recovery time. So fart leg training is um, the probably the weirdest word that you'll ever hear in sport. Um, it was actually invented by a guy with the last name fart leg, so that's where that comes from. It's not someone's cheap joke. Um, so basically it's looking at continuous training, but there's bursts of intense work within that continuous training. So it's a little bit like um, interval training, but um, you don't actually have a rest. You just simply go back to a continuous training state. Um, so Usually this sort of training is um, applicable to running. We sort of um, use that example the most when we talk about it. But you can train uh, both aerobic and anaerobic glycolysis in this case. Um, to overload it, obviously you can increase the distance, the intensity, and also the frequency of each burst. So um, if you're finding that um, it's too easy to um, recover from each burst, then you just put more in and it becomes a lot more difficult that way. So speed training is high intensity exercises that improve the quickness when moving limbs. This doesn't necessarily have to be sprinting, although usually that's what we refer to, but also you can look at cycling or even boxing, looking at moving your arms as fast as possible. And generally it's um, anaerobic power, agility and uh, muscular power and speed that are developed. Um, to overload them, you can increase the sets and the reps, uh, the intensity and the distances. Um, and also decrease the recovery time again and also add resistance. So resistance training is building muscular strength, muscular endurance or muscular power by exercising um, a muscle against a resistance. So um, for example, if you wanted to look at local muscular endurance, um, you'd be looking at light weights uh, with high reps. Whereas if you're looking at muscular strength, you'd be looking at high or heavy weights with low reps. So um, it will depend on how you um, balance your weight um, ratio with your reps. Um, it, that, will that will determine um, whether you're actually training the strength, the endurance or the muscular power. Obviously muscular power will also include, include a bit of speed. Um, so you have to also include that in your training program. So overload, again, um, just the usual increase in sets, reps and load, um, and also decreasing the recovery time between those sets and reps. So plyometrics is explosive training. Um, it's fairly exclusive. Um, it's, it's quite 
um, limited to various areas of the body, particularly the legs. Um, so it's looking at developing anaerobic power um, and also muscular power in particular. And basically, um, if you happen to include jumping, leaping and bounding, bounding into your training program, then your um, training plan metrics. So it's just looking at that explosive contraction of the muscle. Um, to overload this, you can increase your sets and reps, um, the load, the heights. So for example, if you're jumping over um, small hurdles, you can increase the height of them and then you're forced to improve that contraction or the power of the contraction. And also you can um, increase the intensity and the speed of the movement. So circuit training is using a number of different stations to develop a variety of fitness components. So this is probably the most flexible and um, one of the easiest training methods to employ uh, because you can do a lot all at once. It's um, something that is not time intensive because you're getting a lot of different training methods all into the one thing. Um, so with examples there, I've put anything you like. So basically what happens is you set up a series of stations, probably about 10. You might work at each station for two minutes each and have a rest station in there as well. Um, and then you might include things like you want to train muscular endurance on one of those. You might want to train um, anaerobic capacity on another one. So you might have mini sprints going. Uh, you might have muscular endurance in a different way. So you might have some sit-ups going. You might want to do some boxing at one of those stations as well. So you can put any sort of activity you like in there. Um, you can overload it obviously any way you want. Um, so increasing the reps, the sets, the time at each station. Um, you could decrease the rest in between each station. Um, and you can also put in a lot more stations. Um, just bear in mind though that there's only a certain point to which you can bear the overload. So you don't want to overload every single station all at once um, because then that will be too intense for the athlete. All right, flexibility is basically moving muscles through their range of motion. Um, there's now five types of flexibility training, um, but basically there's either um, stretching while you're standing still or staying still, um, stretching through a movement, or um, being aided to stretch, so someone else pushing that muscle uh, through a movement. Um, so obviously the fitness component developed is flexibility, there's nothing else really that you can do with that. And generally we sort of tack this onto the start and finish of a training session. Um, the examples there again, it's just any sort of uh, flexibility training, so any type of stretching really. And there's no possible overload really, um, except to really push the muscle as far as it can go each time. I mean, you, you can't increase uh, the resistance for flexibility, for example. All right, so Swiss ball training is obviously using uh, one of those big exercise balls to aid in your exercises. Uh, there's a couple of ways they can be used. Um, so you're going to be looking at either using it as a weight. So for example, lying on the floor, hold the ball between your legs and raising it. So it'll work on your core strength or your abs a lot more. Um, you could use it to aid flexibility, so uh, laying back on the ball can increase um, the, the distance that you can stretch out your core and also just use it to increase the variety of your exercises. So for example, lean, leaning against the ball, um, against a wall and then um, doing squats from that position. So it just changes up the exercises that you do and then that helps to promote the training principle of variety in a training program. Um, there's a few different fitness components that can be worked. That's balance, local muscular endurance, and also muscular strength. And um, one that I didn't put there is flexibility as well. All right, core strength is our last one. And that's basically the use of the trunk to develop strength in the core and lower back. Now, this is really important just for everyday life also for very good posture. Um, obviously, the older we get, the more resistant our bodies become to posture, uh, to holding good posture, I suppose. So having a good core strength when you're younger is um, really quite essential. And things that you can do to improve that are, um, or examples are things like isometrics, where you tense your core muscles for a period of time and then you let go. Um, or even just when you're sitting in a classroom or sitting in a meeting, you're just tensing your core muscles, so your abs mainly um, and your pelvic floor. 
Um, also just doing things like sit-ups and crunches and um, if you do some exercises, say where you're lying on your belly on the floor, um, raising your upper back or doing leg, great, leg raises from that point. Uh, they're all developing core strength. So it's basically looking at that torso area um, and improving the muscle strength there. All right, so in summary, um, just the different fitness components, uh, continuous training, interval training, fart leg speed, resistance and plyometrics, circuit training, flexibility, Swiss ball and core strength. Thanks for watching.